Hello YouTube. So uh, a few weeks ago I made a video modeling a uh, standard sort of three low uh, finger spinner in SketchUp and it's been surprisingly popular. It's got over 5,000 views now so uh, it's quite surprised that did so well but due to popular demand or at least the uh, demand of one person uh, I thought I'd make another video this time making a shuriken style uh, uh, finger spinner model in SketchUp that uh, again you'd be able to use as a template to uh, cut out the uh, the spinner from a piece of wood or whatever material you might want to use. So uh, we're going to make one of these uh, five pointed style shuriken designs uh, purely for recreational use, not for use in uh, any kind of ninja warfare. So over in uh, SketchUp, this is SketchUp 2017. This is how it would appear if you just downloaded SketchUp and uh, ran it for the first time. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a couple of extra toolbars which will be useful. So go to view toolbars. Uh, you can leave the getting started toolbar there but add in the large tool set which appears down the left hand side and also add in the views which appears at the top here. Uh, the views toolbar will allow you to quickly switch uh, to see a, a perfect, perfectly aligned top view of your model or any other direction obviously but uh, the top view in particular is useful for this kind of template uh, work in SketchUp so that you can see the thing without any kind of uh, uh, perspective skew due to the, uh, the view and I'm also going to turn off uh, the perspective view altogether as well for the same reason so uh, switch to the top view click on the roof of the house there and the first thing I'm going to do is add an 11 millimeter circle centered right in the middle here so just move the mouse towards the middle and it will snap to the origin click drag out and then type in 11 for 11 millimeters you can see in the standard view the 11 millimeter circle is tiny so roll forward on your scroll wheel to zoom in until that looks like a reasonable size now to get the uh, five pointed uh, sort of symmetry to this we're going to add some construction lines guidelines so start with the protractor again click in the origin click up to the somewhere anywhere up the green axis here move the mouse to the right to start moving along to the right here you can see in the bottom right corner the angle is that we've moved to is currently shown but you can just type in 72 degrees 72 is the magic number for uh, getting five point of symmetry 360 degrees divided by five is 72 and then we can start again click on the line you've just drawn start moving around move around 72 degrees and repeat that again and once more So now we've actually got, uh, because the guidelines go in both directions, we've got this uh, sort of mass of lines going in all directions, but they will be useful uh, later on. So next we want to add some guide points. So to do that, we're going to use the tape measure tool. And we're going to start again in the origin, move up the green axis here. And this is going to set the tip of the top point of the the shape and I'm going to make that 48 millimeters up the axis just by typing in 48 and then again repeat the same thing four more times uh, moving around the first or the moving around every other guideline here typing in 48 each time 48 and 48 so those are going to be the tips of the five points. Now I want another point along these intermediate uh, construction lines, which will be where the uh, sort of blades come down to. And again, this is all uh, 
just design decisions. You won't have enough uh, meat in the middle there that your spinner isn't going to fall apart, particularly if it's made of wood. So I'm going to go for, let me just check what I did. I've got a sketch here that I'm working from. I'm going to make that uh, 16 millimeters out from the middle. That doesn't look like enough. I think I'm going to make that. Let's control Z to redo that. I'm going to make that 20 millimeters. So the point will come down from here to here and back out to here. So again, go around again, do that on every other one. 20. 20, oops, that's not right, control Z, 20 and 20. So we've now got the points we need to actually draw. Let's do one down on this axis as well. Let's put that one, there we go. Okay, so now we've got five points for the tips, five points for the kind of uh, valleys in between. So now we can come over to the toolbar, choose the line, and now just pick any one of these points to start from. The uh, SketchUp snaps to the point when you get close to it. Left click, draw over to here, up to here. Just keep clicking on the guide points. Okay, and that's the basic five pointed shape. So you can see here the uh, the arms here aren't quite parallel with each other. That's just a function of where this uh, sort of valley point here is. So you can even try moving that. Press M to move. Click on the point there. You can then try moving that in and out a little bit and see what you like. You would need to go and move all the other ones equally, obviously, to uh, to match if you do change it. I'm going to leave mine as they are. So this is quite a nice sort of Christmas star effect, but uh, to make it more shuriken-like, we need to have, have a little cutout here. And so to do that, we're going to draw uh, circles centered not quite on these uh, points here, but just centered a little bit further out. Uh, Let's try, let's try, try drawing a circle on that one there and see how that looks. So C for circle, draw a small circle there, make it a size that you can easily drill out with a, a drill. So let's say we'll make it three millimeters radius. That looks a bit small. What about uh, four millimeters radius? Maybe a bit bigger, five. Let's go for five. So that's five millimeter radius, so a 10 millimeter diameter drill bit needed to drill this hole. That doesn't look too bad, actually. I might just use those guide points there for my circles. Let's uh, sort of cut this one out and see how it looks. So to cut it out, space to select. Select the face there and press delete to delete it. Delete. Select, click, select the lines, press delete on your keyboard to delete. Yeah, I think that looks okay. So let's do that for the other four points. Back to the circle tool, circle there, five millimeters radius. will snap to five millimeters but you need to watch in the bottom right corner to make sure it uh, has gone to the dimension you want and then we'll do the same thing deleting the unwanted portions of the uh, the geometry so space to go to select tool just delete the lines and there we go Oops, I just moved the view, so click the uh, 
top to get back to the perspective view and it's shift and middle mouse button to pan up select delete 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 and we can also select the circle in the middle there and delete that and there we have it that doesn't look too bad so at this point I'll save this before something horrible happens overwrite my earlier version so at this point you can just print this so if you zoom in to make it more or less fill the screen now to print this in a way that you can use it as a template you want it to come out on the page exactly the right size given the dimensions that we've set so to do that file print and in the print dialog go to the print size section here you don't want it to fit to page you don't want to use model extents you just want to ensure that the scale here is one to one so whatever these numbers are should be the same in both uh, boxes this is obviously one inch to one inch although it's uh, converted that to metric for me and that should then print out exactly the right size so let's do that so here's the printout and we'll just check the dimensions just to uh, make sure the printout has got the right sort of scale so if we measure across the middle here you can see we've got just about 22 millimeters for the center bearing so we know the rest of the measurements should all be in line with that because it doesn't matter too much if this black line is exactly 22 millimeters uh, in diameter because you're just going to use that center point and drill a 20 drill a hole which is exactly 22 millimeters based on that center point so uh, and likewise for these other five smaller holes as long as you've got these center points um, it can obviously be a, a few tenths of a millimetre off the black line and it will still uh, work out perfectly well. And just to get the overall, the overall dimension, you can see it's about uh, 19 95 millimetres. Let's start from the 10 there. 92, 93 millimetres, tip to tip there. And if you work in old money, for whatever reason, I've got my old school ruler here. It's about three and five eighths, tip to tip that way. That uh, printed template's all you need to go ahead and make one of these spinners from wood. But uh, just for fun, let's uh, continue modeling this and try and make it into a full uh, solid object in SketchUp just to see how it looks. So you can see now if I pan up, pressing the middle mouse button and uh, moving the mouse up where I can tilt the object over you can see it has no depth it's just a flat template uh, so to make it into a, a full 3d object in SketchUp you either press P or just select the push pull tool here hover over the face you want to push or pull so that it uh, gets the, uh, the dotted effect on it use the deaf mouse button to bring that surface up and we're going to bring it up seven millimeters which is the width of a standard 608 bearing so that gives you an idea of the general shape of the thing but uh, it'd be nice to have these points being a bit more pointy so let's try bringing these tips down to a point so to do that use the move tool hover your mouse on the very end point there click and start dragging down so you can see sometimes this will work and sometimes you'll get this unpleasant uh, faceting effects which is to do with the way the uh, the segments of the circles in the cutouts have, uh, have fallen relative to everything else so to avoid that what I'm going to do is cancel that move operation and I'm just going to quickly come in here and add a line between these two points using the pencil tool again just hover to use the uh, use SketchUp's get SketchUp to help you you want to go right on the end point there across to this end point here and that now effectively creates a simple triangular face here which we can manipulate so M to go back to the move tool hover on the end point move it down 
make sure you're moving on the blue axis, which means it's moving exactly vertically. And we want to move it down 3.5 millimeters, which is half the width of the object we just created. And we need to do the same thing on the underside. So again, quickly create a line between these two endpoints. Middle mouse button to pan the object round again. M for move, select the endpoint and move it up to coincide with the one that we moved previously. And now we have a sort of pointed blade on that one that one point and I'll quickly do the others. And there you go, a five-pointed pointy shuriken finger spinner. And there's obviously many, many more things you could do with this. You can change the, the proportions, the number of points. Uh, doing it with three points is a little tricky because the geometry sort of runs into the hole for the bearing in the middle, but uh, four or five or six is uh, perfectly doable. So uh, yeah, enjoy it. I'll uh, put the link to this SketchUp file in the description, like I did for the last one. Have a look at the previous uh, video if you haven't seen that already. And I uh, hope you enjoy playing with SketchUp and hopefully uh, making a finger spinner in this style. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.